Hi guys, this is David Cook here from the News with Design team and today I thought I'd talk to you about one of our smaller features, something we built about a year ago uh, that I worked on. I was the main designer on it. It was only one sprint team. I think it took maybe one to two sprints. Uh, yeah, pretty small, uh, but I'm really proud of it. Uh, it's our News with Chrome extension. Anybody who's worked with me at some stage over my career will know that I'm a big fan of Chrome extensions. I think they're really fun to work on. You can build things so quickly and you can give loads of value to users at uh, very little development cost. Uh, so this was something that we built as a way of sharing the insights and the data that we gather uh, at Spike to people who maybe don't have a need for the full suite of our tools and um, maybe just want to get a sense of you know what our data can do for them uh, and uh, help share the brand and news whip outside of our core products so it was kind of a lead generator and it's been quite successful that for the marketing team as i said small feature one to two sprints i'm going to talk through why i like it so much uh, and why i'm kind of proud of it uh, to show it off to the best of its ability, I need to get an, uh, a story or an article that will have a decent amount of engagement. Anybody who knows News Whip, it, we use social engagement to help and rank and track uh, breaking stories across the world. So what we're looking at here is our kind of news feed dashboard. This is the sort of thing you would use then if you're monitoring specific topics, specific beats. Um, it's the most common view for, say, journalists and some of our PR account executives who use this on a regular basis. So here's a good article. This is one about uh, a Pfizer vaccine. I just open that up here. And in the top corner here, you can see the news with logo. I just click on that. Fingers crossed it works. Yes. So what you can see now is initially the top level layers of engagement. So this is what we're showing. So if you are at the publication, if you were the New York Times and you wanted to see how much engagement this got, or if you're a competitor, it's not restricted to you having specific access to this page. Um, one of the great benefits of Newswhip is it allows people to look at the engagement on other people's outputs. So if you're looking at uh, competitor analysis and stuff like that, it's very helpful. So you can see this article is obviously a big story. New York Times, a big generator of uh, engagement. So they've had 241 plus uh, Facebook interactions, 2,600 influencer shares on Twitter. Pinterest total pins, unsurprisingly, not really a topic that would generate a lot of Pinterest um, engagement. I suppose that brings us, if you look at that now, that's the first kind of design thing that I liked. Um, what was nice about this project is that it wasn't part of our product suite, so it didn't have to use the same UI that we would normally use from our design system. It could be something different, and because we knew a lot of users wouldn't be familiar with the products, they'd be coming in uh, you know, very top of funnel or just they might find us uh, themselves. So we wanted to align it more with our market branding. So we're using typography, fonts, and we're using the dark blue, which is part of our branding suite color. So it was nice to get away from um, the stuff I would normally be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Not that I'm you know, unhappy with the Spike UI, it's just, you know, as designers, especially as product designers, you tend to be looking at the same thing a lot um, throughout a year. So any opportunity to do something different, um, it's very well received. So it's fun to do that. And of course, if you're familiar with Spike and you would have seen it in the previous screen, we have a dark UI. So it's nice to do something with a light UI. So I, I enjoyed that as well. So as I said, branding colors, I suppose not too many of them, but that dark blue is a key branding color for us to be able to use that. I've got a nice light gray headlines um, and then coming down here just to explain what's going on here so this basically tracks uh, what Newswhip does is every time an article is posted we're then tracking how much social engagement it gets and what we're showing here is that unsurprisingly as most uh, news publications will do is once they publish an article they'll then relink that in their Facebook page and try and drive engagement from Facebook into their article where they will help generate ad revenue or just get more readers. So you can see here, it's, it's pretty common for a news publication to be at the top of the list. So they've driven 48,000 interactions from their own Facebook page. Coming down here, you'll see you've got Joe Biden, Occupy Democrats, 
So, you know, it helps either the New York Times journalist to see, you know, like how well is this story performing, or it helps other people to get a sense of like, hmm, okay, this is an unusual story, has it generated much interest? Uh, very useful for gauging that. And also then, as you come down, you might be going, oh, okay, who's Jeff Merkley? I've never heard of that. So you open that up. We're giving you a, a summary of who they are from uh, their Facebook profiles, and then you can tell when they reposted it. So that was a 11.30 last night. Uh, and the same then on Twitter. Um, so we're showing who are the big Twitter accounts. Again, unsurprisingly, New York Times reposted it uh, in their Twitter feed, and that uh, garnered 1,277 shares, and they can see that breakdown. So it's like a way of gauging, well, who are the most important people in this domain? And that's something that our PR users are always trying to un understand. Are there people that are influencing the public on a certain topic or within a certain brand that we're not aware of that maybe we could um, strike up a relationship with? So you can see, We've got Virginia Hughes, and um, she might have two different profiles. That's why she appears twice. And again, you can dive in that uh, in there and see um, what they are. And if you click on any of these links, you'll get driven straight to their page, and you can dive into that a bit deeper. So that's pretty much it. Again, a very small feature. The reason I like it so much, and the reason why I come back to it over and over again, is because. As any product designer knows who's been around the block as long as I have, 80% of your job is trying to get what you've designed through the pipe, through the sausage factory, at the other end, in some recognizable form. So once you know, you've know you got your original designs and it's gone through user testing, it's gone through product management approval, it's gone up to the exec team and back down to product management, and then it's gone into grooming and sizing and then back out to user testing, it can be a fairly butchered version of what you started with. But what I love about this and why I'm, you know, probably, you know, overly proud of it, more proud than I should be because it's such a small thing, is that it's identical to what I designed. The text is exactly the same size, nothing got changed, it's all built and it's beautifully animated. Now it's not like the most complicated animations ever but I just still after all the years being a designer I still get such a thrill from well-crafted animations and this just opens and closes so smoothly and the arrow just animates perfectly there's really nothing I could fault it and I think that's that's the thing there's just nothing wrong with it um, which I love and um, so often you come back to your design works and you know when we talk later I might you know take you through some of the bigger features we've done in Spike, there's always stuff that, you know, you kind of go, oh God, why did I think about that? Why did I put that in? That's a bit crazy. But there's nothing here that I particularly um, am embarrassed or ashamed of. Still really enjoy coming back and using it. I, it's not perfect. Um, there's a little bit of a padding issue there between the dark blue container and the little radius could probably be a little bit more pronounced. I think when a user comes in, they may not be quite clear to them that Twitter is something that you should look at. In fact, it's great. That means it may not be, you know, it might be disabled. So I would probably think about putting a notification in that. We've never actually come back to um, put more development into this, lots of stuff in it. And then, as you can see, the Pinterest engagement levels, um, they're really useful for very specific demographics. So some of our users get a lot of, in, a lot of use out of that. But I have to say, Using that sort of eighty twenty rule, I would probably go back and put in our Reddit data now. Um, I think that might be more useful to more people. Um, so that's it. But that's pretty much it. I hope you found that of some interest. Uh, please leave your comments below. I've been dying to try. Uh, sorry, dying to hear how you get it. Get on trying it out. Um, as I said, it's on the Chrome Store. Go grab it um, and play around with it. it. Might be useful to you. Um, and thanks a million. Talk soon.